So God will work. Which is quick and powerful. Which is sharper than any toilet soap. Your word that instructs in spirits. I pray that as your word is shaped, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in their sight. The Lord is spirit. Amen. The last time we were here, I will mention to you about wine and the first miracle at Cana of Galilee where Jesus turned water into wine. Let's suppose in my excitement, I don't know about you, but I really love the Word of God. And more and more, I am appreciating the Word of God. So, in my excitement, I would have said um, that Jesus went counter to the culture and the tradition, which was correct. But where I missed, um, if you would have followed it to its logical conclusion, then you would have recognized yeah, that that's probably an error. And yes, it was, because I said uh, what would normally happen is that the Baptist way would have come up first. But really and truly, the best way was served first, and Jesus. Um, counter because what he did, he served the best last. So I just wanted to make that correction, you know, uh, before before person run off and say, hey, but that's not correct, that's not true. So for those who are viewing from the comforts on um, comforts of their home, uh, please note that. Today, I want to share with you from the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, and verse 10. It says to us from the New International Version, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And yes, if you have said, I know what he's going to be preaching on, you're correct. Because I intend to share with you today on a pretty simple thing, fear not. Fear not. Over the last few months, there was and still is a fear that has gripped a world. What came into sharp focus for some was the fear of death. I am not ready to die as yet, Sister Lovell. Uh, Sister Lovell and I, we share. This joke. So I'm not ready to die as yet. So I said to her, uh, I, I have not even uh, renewed my passport. I have not even journeyed to the, to the departure lounge because I am not ready to die as yet. Some might be saying, Yes, I am not ready to die because I have small children or young children. I want them to see or to reach a double. That is the cry of every parent, every mother in particular. I want to see 
my children grow up. For the young people, they might be saying, I am young, I know how life to live. So don't hold me back. For some, it is the fear of losing a job. Different agencies are concerned as to what is happening to the world uh, locally, regionally, and internationally because companies are closing. Uh, the Small Business Association is, is trying to find ways as to how they will bail out uh, those small businesses that are buckling under pressure. What am I going to do if I lose my job? It is only my one. And I have all the bills to pay, including the mortgage. Sounds familiar? Now, now the seniors were able to override that one. Um, but then there's a fear of failure. I don't want to fail. I'm sure that none of us we like to fail. Am I right or am I right? We don't like to fail. Everything that we set up to do, we want to be sure that it is successful. And I know that person say that failure is not final. And I'm not debating that because I'm aware of that. But the reality is there is a fear of failure. And because we fear failure, sometimes we don't attempt anything. For others, it is, will this economy or the world's economy recover? I am sure that there are other things that can be added to this list, but the reality is, this fear of the unknown, this fear as to what is going to happen next, as us. Yes, we are moving along as though we are fearless. But deep inside, we are fearful. Um, you, you, you ever watch out as I was preparing and so on, I went back to my childhood, you know. Um, I, I don't like dogs. We have dogs, but I don't like dogs. And I don't like dogs because when I was growing up, my aunt, we used to call her Sister Watson. She would take us by this lady who lived in Ebenezer. If you're familiar with St. Philip, you would go there. Ebenezer is just before you get to Sunbury, just before you get to St. Philip Park Church, uh, that area before that is called Ebenezer. This lady had at the time what is called an Alsatian dog. So again, if you're familiar with dogs, you know what an Alsatian looks like. Um, some agencies, police, etc. would use them because they're good um, trapping dogs and so on. But this lady had an Alsatian dog. And we visited the lady, and my brother ran and left me. And the dog was over me, ready to fight. But let me tell you, as poor as my aunt was, she had her back and she was beating him. From that time on, I never really liked dogs, and it cemented in my mind recently why I don't like them. Our neighbor, and I call everybody in the neighbor, but the neighbor came over and the dog started barking. No, no, dogs are interesting creatures. The dog is barking and wagging his tail. But that's, a, uh, that's an interesting combination. A dog barking at someone and wagging the tail. So my mom is saying, oh yeah, boy, you see what I tell you? She likes me, she likes me. And he called patting her. Now when the dog snapped at his finger, all he could have done is look at him and say, boy, I can't go trust you. So that, that's a dog for you. But some people tell you, dogs don't bite my dog, don't bite. And it's saying to us that this whole thing of fear 
is something that even though we move around as though we are fearless, deep inside there is that fear that grips us. Permit me today to calm your fears from the Word of God. And I say to us that the more I read the Word of God, the more I study the Word of God, the more I ponder the Word of God, I am recognizing more and more the significance and importance of not only reading the Word, but applying the Word to daily living. I am saying to us that we have a document called the Bible. And it is necessary, the onus is on every single one of us to read the word, to apply the word, and to understand that this document called the Bible was not written or compiled for men with God ears, but for us as well. According to the dictionary definition of fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. Again, uh, growing up, when they had kids on both sides of the road. A certain time of the year, you would hear the harp mantle. Boy, and how many of your daddy were probably not to tell you about this, right? But but when you hear the harp mantle, so most of us at the time would walk to school. So we had we didn't have the luxury of, of being chauffeured to school, but, but we would walk to school and when you hear the hard man out, any rusting in the key, not even to see a book that at you. <laughs> this unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous and is likely to cause pain or threat. And let me say, even something you remember those days when you had those big ugly hurts? Come on, some big ugly black hurts that when you see them, you used to run so much so that back then hurts had to be off the road by 6 p.m. Because the harm was made to her <laughs> Oh man, I tell you, sit with your children and share some of those stories. We are told that Isaiah, he was the son of Amos and Amos, Amos said, and he was born in Jerusalem. It probably, probably, this prophet was of noble purity, so probably his, his parents had some sort of recognition, they were outstanding citizens, and we're told that having been brought up in Jerusalem, Isaiah would have received the best education the capital could offer. Someone has said of Isaiah that he spent his life trying to get Israel to become acquainted with God and his word and to trust him implicitly in his guidance. This person will have said that, yes, this is what Isaiah was trying to do, to get the people of Israel to get back to God. I wish that I could be like Isaiah, to get the people of this community, to get the people of this country to get back to God. According to Isaiah, in his book, Exploring the Old Testament, he said that by universal agreement that the book of Isaiah contains the most complete unfolding of the gospel to be found in the Old Testament. 
The book of Isaiah captures the birth of Christ. It captures his origin. It captures, my friends, in this book, his anointing with the Holy Spirit. It captures his ministry. It captures his rejection by the Jews. His silence in the presence of his accuser. His atoning death. His burial in a rich man's tomb. His eventual victory over death. All of that is found in the book of Isaiah. My friends, in the same book of Isaiah, we are told in chapter 1 and verse 18 in the book of Isaiah, come now, let us reason together, said the Lord. My friends, God is calling us to reason through your sins. Oh, glory to God. Through your sins. Alright, call it. They shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18, he makes his call to the people of Israel. Come now and let us reason together. I want to say to us that God is still calling. In chapter 6 of the same book of Isaiah, we are faced with the call of God on Isaiah's life. We are told in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up and his chain filled the temple. He went on to say, Woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. My friends, I don't know what or who is blocking, but from scripture, when Uzziah died, Isaiah was able to see the Lord high and lifted up. Isaiah was able to have a rich experience with his God that transformed his life. So we have come let us reason. We have the call on Isaiah's life. And we are going to pull my text. I want to say to us that we have the comfort. Now let me tell you that the people of that day, you peruse it, the people of that day were experiencing tremendous pressure. And that is why I said earlier that the Bible is so real, especially in this time that when you read it, you can see that what happened then is happening now. And the comfort that Isaiah, who was given to the people who were fearful, who were wondering what is going to happen to them, we hear from the New International Version, do not fear. For I am with you. Listen to me. You don't want anything else. When God is with you, He is not going to operate like someone who is with you and then when disaster presents itself, they run and they leave you. Brother Alan, the God that we serve says to us, the comfort He gives to us, do not fear, for I am with you. That is The psalmist gave it said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And I will fear no evil because you are with me. When you peruse the scripture, you will see how God constantly assures his people 
of him being with them. Someone has said that there are 365 passages that would have the words, do not fear. Some other person I probably didn't want to give them to say, you know what? 365 hours a regular year, but this person said, you know, there are 366, one for every day, including the lean year. So we may simply conclude that they probably pull from another version. The comfort that he is giving to his people. Do not fear, for I am with you. And I say to us that, yes, the times are fearful. There is no two ways about that. But the thing about it is we have a God that we can confide in. We have a God that we can trust. We have a God that we can depend on. And that is what makes the difference. I suggest that if you don't know him, you need to get to know him. If you know him in part, you really need to have an intimate relationship with him so that you will be able to internalize those words. Do not fear, for I am with you. He goes on to say, do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Do not feel that that word dismay has to do with distress and consternation, etc. Do not feel that way because I am the Lord your God. Listen to me. God, through the prophet Isaiah, was saying, Look at the idols. They cannot do anything. Look at the wood carvings. Look at the stone carvings. They cannot do anything, but the God we serve is more than able to do abundantly more than what we can think or imagine. Do not be dismayed, for I, the Lord, am your God. You see, I saw was cemented in the minds of the people. You should know this. Of all people, you should know this. You would have seen God at work, so you should know this. You would have seen God delivering, so you should know this. You would have seen God coming through you, so you should have known this. Do not be dismayed, for I am the Lord, your Come on. It goes on to say, my friends, I will strengthen you and help you. I will strengthen you and help you. Why? If you check Isaiah chapter 4, it speaks about the young and the old, etc. How they fit and they grow with. But it goes on to say, But they that wait upon the Lord, but they that are in the service of the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be. I am suggesting to us today that the God who has told us that we ought not to fear is going to strengthen us and he's going to help us. There are times when we feel weak. There are times when we need to be strengthened. And let me say to you that you may try to lose it. You may try to come it. And if you are adventurous, 
You may even trade a little bleed. But the reality is that when you have gone through all of those years, you still live in it. And God strengthens us. No wonder one of my favorite psalms, and you'll hear me say it all the time God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. So here, what Isaiah again will say in Isaiah chapter 43, when you walk through, come on the river, when you walk through, or when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, the word says to us, you will not drown. You see, you can only do that when you know your God in a real way. When you walk through the fire of oppression, Isaiah said, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. As the Hebrew boys, they knew their God. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel. Your Savior. For who is it? It is too sweet. As I take you home. He goes on to say, Not only will I strengthen you and help you, but I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Let me say to you, the word righteous carries with it the implication of having been tested or judged and found righteous. And when God speaks of his righteous right hand, he is seen to us in the full measure of perfect balance of authority that fully can be found in God himself. No wonder that we read about being seated at the right hand of the Father, a place of authority. And God is saying to us that I am going to uphold you with my righteous right hand. Yes. Listen to me. God can carry others. And he's not going to put them. So, the God we serve, my friends, I want you to know that He is our Redeemer. We were once in sin, we once didn't know Him, but He went all the way to Calvary in the person of His Son Jesus Christ to die for us so that we can be bought back, redeemed. Oh, I love the prophetic, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed. Redeemed forever, this child I am. We have been redeemed. So God is saying to us, when you peruse the book of Isaiah, I am your redeemer. I want to say to us that God is also saying to us, I am your refuge, a place that you can run to in times of difficulty. And God is also saying to us, I am going to replenish and re re refill. I am going to do marvelous things. I'm going to refresh and I'm going to replenish. So even though things look shaky, The one thing that I have come to realize, the only person that we can place our confidence in is God. Do not fear. There are fearful situations, but do not fear. For God, it's with us. 
Do not fear, for God is going to strengthen us. God is going to help us. The shepherds, they got them. Receive some interesting news. Fear not, they were told. For I bring you the tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. My friends, I present to you Jesus Christ. Who is the answer? Who is the way? Who is the truth? Who is the life? As we stand together today, as we stand together today, for the past three Sundays, I would have said to you, raise your hand. Today, and this just this didn't just happen today. But as I prepared, somehow the, the Spirit was saying to me, you can accommodate at least six persons if they want to come forward. You see, fear, fear, fear cripples. Fear. Fear. If you are here and you don't know Jesus, you can get to know him. And when those situations present themselves, I don't know. But we are able to write through. It is not that I am better than anybody. It's not that you are better than anybody. We are all sinners saved by grace. But the one thing or the one person who makes the difference is Jesus Christ himself. So when those situations come, For four more. And the truth is, it is not a case of wanting to know what your experience is. You tell it to God. But it's a case where you're saying, God, because of my humanness, I am fearful at times. But because you have assured me not to fear, and I see how you will work on behalf of others. I am prepared to simply submit and surrender to you. It's as simple as that. So we are 50%. So there's still room for another three. And in a couple of minutes, we're going to be praying. So like I said, these days are very uncertain. I know. I'm not telling you anything that I don't know. But what are you telling me? Is because of the relationship with my God. Because of the relationship with your God. Because of the relationship 
the other God. Many those fearful situations present themselves. We hear God say, I am with you. Two more if you are here, just room for two more. It's you and God. I know I'm not going to come close to you and touch you. But you put those petitions. We are going to have a free together. We pray in a minute. Just supporting many others. Just two more. Father, we come to you today. In your other day, but the day of your Son Jesus Christ. God, situations will have presented themselves that would have resulted in us being fearful. You don't know what's going to happen the next second, the next minute, the next hour. We don't know if it's going to be tomorrow. But God, we hear you say it was here on. Father, your children are coming in your presence. Difficult situations. Tough situations. Situations that probably would have crippled. Bad news. Illness. Rejection. The Father. Your worst things. Fear not. You're going to strengthen. You're going to help. You're going to hold with your righteous right hand. Father, every desire of their hearts, I pray that you will be granted today in the name of Jesus. You have seen their faith in believing you to respond to their prayer. Do it for them, God. Do it the way only you know. Amen. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.